All right, well, good afternoon again, everyone. My name is Aisha Glover. I'm the president and CEO at the Newark Alliance. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our mayor, Raz J. Baraka. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank everybody for tuning into our webinar. I want to thank all the partners that are here with us. Obviously, United Way of Greater Newark, uh, Invest Newark, uh, the City of Newark, Newark Alliance, Prudential, uh, everybody who's tuned in. Uh, our Congressman Payne's office, Senator Booker, Senator Menendez. Uh, want to thank all of you and the folks from the state of New Jersey as well um, for being a part of this uh, call. It is very, very important. It is not our last call. Uh, we will do a few more. Uh, this is uh, but the first, and it's like thank all of the businesses. I know you've been affected by this, and this is a terrible situation for all of us. Uh, we've never been at this point before. Uh, we've never experienced this before, so we're on uncharted territory. We're just trying our best uh, to make sure that people are not completely and totally devastated uh, economically and that the city does not fall uh, backwards as a result of this virus. We're going to get through it, but we have to get through it together. So I appreciate and, and thank you for your patience and your cooperativeness in making sure that we uh, move the city forward. So that being said, let's, 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 let's get started. Thank you. Great, next slide, Vanessa. So first, I just wanna make sure to communicate uh, the range of speakers that have really come together to make sure that everybody gets the most updated and current information, um, starting with our mayor, who you just heard from, Raj J. Baraka, the Honorable Bob Menendez from the U.S. Senate, the Honorable Cory Booker from the U.S. Senate, Honorable Donald M. Payne from the Congress, uh, Al Titone, who's the district leader for the New Jersey District Office of the Small Business Association. Joe Kelly, Deputy Chief of Staff from Economic uh, Growth from the state of New Jersey. Tim Sullivan, who's the CEO at the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. And Brunel Hall, President and CEO from Invest Newark. Um, I will be moderating again today. We also have our uh, Deputy Mayor and Director of Economic and Housing Development, Allison Ladd, uh, CEO from the United Way, Catherine Wilson, and Daryl Shaw from Prudential Center, who is also joined um, and will be available during our Q&A section. Next slide. Uh, so as our first speaker today, I'd like to turn it over to Senator Menendez. Well, thank you, uh, Aisha. Uh, I hope everyone on the call is well and practicing the social distance measures. That is the only way that we can stop the spread of the virus. I know they're tough, uh, but the only way that we can actually bend the curve uh, and at the end of the day, be part of the solution instead of part of the statistics. Uh, I appreciate Mayor Baraka's leadership in putting together uh, this teleconference so that uh, everyone uh, can get the most latest information. And I just want to salute uh, Senator Booker, my colleague who sits on the Small Business Committee of the Senate uh, for doing such a fantastic job in the package we're about to describe, as well as Congressman Payne, who is uh, in the House as the House faces uh, a vote on this uh, final package as well. I salute uh, their leadership and all the others on the call. You know, in challenging times like these, um, we uh, are proud that we were able to come together at the end of the day to uh, deal with uh, some of the challenges uh, that we have, particularly in our small business community. Uh, and unfortunately, when we were given the original package by the Senate uh, Republican leadership last week, we had uh, all provisions for corporations, and we have no problem with that, except uh, there were no strings attached, and it left behind small businesses as well as uh, workers. And uh, that's why we could not vote to continue at that time, because it didn't have what we needed for small businesses. In a few days, through our negotiations and efforts, we've come up with a significantly improved legislation that passed the Senate by putting small business and workers first. And I just want to go through uh, some of those. You see it on the screen to some extent. Uh, there's $349 billion in new SBA 7A loans, 
And while the uh, loans uh, waive uh, both bar and lender fees, they still have some interest rates. Um, if the proceeds of the SBA 7A loan are used for one payroll cost, two mortgage interest uh, payments, three rent, uh, four utilities, that portion of the loan is forgivable. Uh, this forgivable SBA uh, 7A loan program is called the Paycheck Protection Program or the PPP. That 7A SBA loan defers low payments uh, by a minimum of six months up to one year, uh, defines qualifying small businesses as a small business or nonprofit, and we know there are many nonprofits in our communities that are working, with 500 employees or less. It allows hotels and restaurants with more than one location to qualify as small business if each of those locations has fewer than 500 employees, and it establishes maximum loan amount uh, as far up as $10 million. In addition to those provisions, um, there is $10 billion for SBA emergency grants of up to $10,000 to provide immediate relief for small business operating costs. That grant program is set through a program called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan or the ITIL EIDL program. Grant money can be used to provide paid sick leave to employees, maintaining payroll, meeting increased production costs due to supply chain disruptions, or paying business obligations, including debts, rent, and mortgage payments. Uh, also, there's $17 billion for the SBA to cover six months of payments for small businesses that already have an existing standard SBA 7A 504 microloan. Um, what qualifies for the SBA 7 loan, uh, forgivable loans? Small businesses or nonprofits, 500 or less, uh, qualify for the payment protection program. Uh, how do you apply for one? Uh, SBA 7A loans are made by SBA approved lenders. And to find an SBA approved lender near you, you should visit the SBA's lenders match webpage that website is www.sba.gov backslash funding dash programs loans backslash lender match. Uh, so those are important. Of course, until the law is signed, it will not have, uh, there will not have the ability to do that, but we would hope that the House would pass it sometime today, sent to the president, and that he would immediately sign it. Uh, and so those are some of the provisions. I know there are others that uh, you may uh, have that will rise through uh, your questions, but uh, we believe this is a critical part of the economic vertebrae of our communities. It's a small business, and we're proud to have uh, fought to have this massive infusion uh, into uh, what is essential for our small businesses. And I'll turn it over. Thank you so much, Senator. Um, and just as a reminder, for all of our participants, we will have um, an opportunity to answer some of the questions that were previously posed that um, we crowdsource. So there will be a little, a little bit of an opportunity for um, some of your more direct and specific questions um, to be answered. But uh, genuinely appreciate your leadership, uh, Senator. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Senator Booker. I want to make sure um, Booker's office is <clears throat> has unmuted so that way we can hear you. And turn up your volume again. It looks like you have unmuted and you're uh, you have unmuted now, but just want to make sure your volume is up. Are you talking? <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so maybe what we'll do is um, we will move to the congressman, we'll move to Congressman Payne, so we'll move forward in the slide, and then when Senator Booker or his office um, is available, just please make sure that your video is, um, uh, is active, and your audio is active as well, so the video or no? either through no. the chat no. oh, or um, once your video pops up, and then we'll be able to tell that you have connectivity. Um, at this time, I'll ask Congressman Payne to give us a little bit of an overview. And thank you so much, Congressman, for joining us today. Well, thank you, Ms. Glover. Am I on? Yes, you are. We can hear you. OK, thank you. If you'd like to um, uh, start your video, you can do that, or you can just leave your name up, whatever you'd like. OK, well, I, I think I'll follow uh, Senator Menendez and, and leave um, that handsome picture of me up. <laughs> if I must say so myself. But um, good afternoon, everyone. And um, based on the number here of participants, I think we have a, a very, very good listening audience uh, for this webinar. And I want to thank my mayor, Mayor Baraka, uh, for organizing uh, this virtual town hall today. <clears throat> you know, this coronavirus global pandemic has created both a public and health an economic crisis in our nation. It has affected every aspect of American life, but it does not have to cripple, um, cripple American life. Uh, as we see it, we are going to obviously go through some constraints and some changes in the manner in which we uh, interact with each other uh, in a safe manner. But, you know, as um, the, the Senator um, so wonderfully uh, surmised. In Congress, we uh, have approved uh, two, and um, we're about to vote on the third. And, uh, you know, as time would have it, uh, the webinar and my opportunity to speak on the bill um, both kind of cross sectioned, and I won't be able to go to the floor uh, to. Um, um, support the bill, but I am wholeheartedly in support of this third package that helps a great deal of people. And um, the um, topic I was asked to speak on, uh, small business. Uh, it is um, um, a bill that included $7 billion to help s small business. Well, the first bill actually had seven billion in it to help small businesses affected by the disease. The second one made sure that all Americans had free access to coronavirus testing and expanded their ability to take paid sick leave. Now, this third two trillion coronavirus stimulus bill is focused primarily on the economic fallout uh, from this global pandemic. Uh, it contains several provisions to benefit all Americans, particularly workers. And that was very important to um, Senator Menendez, Senator, uh, Senator Booker, and myself, uh, and the New Jersey delegation. Uh, it gives every qualified citizen as much as $1,200 based on their income. If you make more than $75,000, um, unfortunately, you do not qualify and they get a $300 deduction for cash donations oh, made to charities, whether they itemize them or not. Unemployed workers get an additional 600 during the crisis and will, uh, as well as 13 additional weeks of unemployment. I'm very happy to see that the bill included workers in the railroad industry usually they are unable to apply for standard unemployment benefits based on their federal contracts. But the transportation industry has gone, has come to a, a really, a, basically what amounts to a ground halt. And those workers need unemployment benefits until the country's back on track, so to speak. Uh, in addition, uh, the bill creates 
the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program to help non-traditional workers get benefits. These workers include performing artists who require audiences for their livelihood and the self-employed. But the bill uh, helps small business businesses tremendously, which we took um, painstakingly uh, advocating for uh, in this third package. It provides $349 billion in loan guarantees to them. It allocates $240 million for small business development centers and Wisman Business Centers, which we know uh, uh, we have in New Jersey. And it provides $10 million for minority business centers for technical assistance. Now that we've provided the funds to support small business, we need to help owners apply to qualify for those benefits and loans. Uh, I've set up a Corona emergency assistance page on my website to do just that. My website is pain.house.gov and you will be able to find um, much help uh, in that respect. It contains a link to the Small Business Administration, who you'll probably be hearing from uh, after me, and a, web and a website to help small businesses owners apply for federal funding. Uh, it has a link to the website of New Jersey's Economic Development Authority. And this, uh, develop this developed uh, several programs to help our workers, excuse me, survive this crisis. And my website is easy to use so that small business owners can get the information they need quickly. Again, the website is pain.house.gov. And you know, even though we're, we uh, have addressed the country's concerns uh, with the three emergency appropriations, I would not be surprised if we need a fourth. And um, Ms. Pelosi is speaking on that uh, with the leadership as we speak, and probably even a fifth as we um, get these first three implemented and see where we are, then we'll have to follow up with those. But um, I'm delighted to say that we have um, a lot going on for um, small businesses and the um, Congressional Black Caucus has been um, vigilant in uh, making sure that um, barber shops and Uber drivers and beauty, um, beauty shops, uh, people that work in those fields and areas um, are not left out of this. So I'm um, really delighted in what we've been able to do for, um, for small businesses. And I've always worked to promote support of small businesses in Newark. As a matter of fact, I had a um, small business um, forum coming up at the end of this month, which had to be canceled. So uh, it's something that's been very important to me. And um, there's also information that I'll be sending out uh, from uh, Jim Clyburn, uh, the whip in the House of Representatives, who did summation on the bill and uh, the different points and areas that um, it, it has an impact on. So you'll be able to find that on my website at all as well. But um, um, nonprofits, we've made sure that uh, they were included in the um, ability to get the small business loans. And I'm probably sure that Al Tatone from the SBA will be able to give you more detail on that. So with that, I will um, not try to take up too much time. We'll yield back at this point. Congressman, thank you so much for that information. We will also be sharing um, your website. Um, and I'm sure that once we're all out of this, um, you will be moving forward with your uh, event targeted to small businesses. Um, at this time, I'd like to see if Senator uh, Booker's office has been able to uh, dial in and if their audio is working. Yeah, hi, it's Corey. Um, sorry that we had some problems with Zoom through my laptop, but we had called in and I'm really grateful to be on. 
Uh, it was good to hear uh, my colleague Bob in the Senate and my dear friend and colleague uh, Don Payne in the House, my fellow Newarker, um, and really just uh, honored that I think this might be the first time in history that Newark has a resident senator, a resident congressperson, an incredible mayor, and really a great uh, elected team are ready to focus on issues affecting Newark and the greater Newark area. We are clearly in a crisis, as my two colleagues have said. Uh, it is a crisis that both is health as well as our wealth and, and, and physical well-being. And, and from every model that I see, this is going to last and endure uh, for a matter of weeks ahead. And I think the economic challenges we're going to face uh, are going to be even further than that. This sobering reality brought together uh, a, more, a bipartisan effort to much degree and resulted in passing out of the Senate the greatest aid package in the history of the United States of America. Uh, I want to thank uh, Don Payne and, and a lot of our congressional friends who were really a part of the negotiations and dialogue on the Senate side, and obviously uh, Bob Menendez, the senior senator from the state of New Jersey, and myself, uh, we were deep into the fight ourselves and were very focused on what our residents and our communities were telling us were the urgent needs from our hospitals, uh, frankly, all the way uh, to our, our small businesses. We knew that this was a moment of urgency and we had to get something big and bold out the door. The bill's imperfect. It is the result of a compromise. It doesn't have everything in it that I would want, and um, it is put forth in an imperfect way, and, and there's obviously changes that Bob and I would love to have done. But that said, there is a tremendous amount of resources there for small businesses. I also want to say at the top, it, it may not be the last, too. There's already conversations about coming back, uh, should we need to, in a month or two months or in some period, short period of time, to get back to working on another aid package. In the meantime, I want to, uh, Bob already touched on a lot of this, and I know we have a, a really great uh, call that's been organized by uh, our great economic team in the, state, in the city of Newark. I know that Al uh, is on the call from, who's our SBA uh, district director, and he's going to walk through a lot of this more in detail. I don't want to be repetitive of what's talked about, but I will highlight very quickly some things that have been uh, briefly mentioned or not mentioned about uh, small business uh, opportunities. Uh, this is a considerable amount of money, the $350 billion in funding for paycheck protection. Uh, for most small businesses with less than $500, you can participate in this paycheck protection program. And remember, it gives zero free loans up to $10 million. And if you retain your employees and their salary level, uh, these loans can be uh, forgiven, i.e. become grants. Um, and that includes things for up to eight weeks of your payroll for rent, mortgage payments, and other expenses. And so the, these are forgivable loans that you could access through many institutions. And I know there'll be people on this call that can walk you through a little bit more on the processes. There's a worker retention tax credit, which is another great opportunity for employers and nonprofits whose operations have been fully or partially suspended as a result of the government order, or who have experienced a greater than 50% reduction in quarterly receipts, the bill provides a refundable payroll tax credit for 50% of wages paid to certain employees during the crisis, and the credit is provided for wages and compensation, including health benefits, and, uh, uh, and is provided for the first $10,000 in wages. So that's just another way to receive uh, resources. There's also a payroll tax deferral, and you can defer uh, paying uh, the employer portion, por portion of certain payroll taxes through, through to 2020, uh, with all 2020 deferral amounts due in two equal installments at the end of 2021 and the end of 2022. So that's a pretty good deferral also uh, opportunity with, again, uh, um, with uh, uh, really no uh, penalties there. Uh, or limited so. Uh, so, And I know that, again, Al will go through uh, the loan programs in greater depth, but quickly, for most small businesses with less than 500 employees, if you apply for an SBA uh, economic injury disaster loan, the SBA will, can provide up to $10,000 within three days of applying for the loan. Um, and so we fought uh, in the last uh, uh, this, in this bill to get $10, million, $10 billion for emergency grants. Uh, 
and these grants don't need to be repaid. Again, uh, th this is just a whole other pool of resources, the $10 billion for emergency grants that I hope that you will find out more about. Uh, there's $17 billion in debt relief for people that have existing SBA loans. Uh, if you are an existing SBA borrower, or if you want to take an SBA loan, SBA will cover the cost, including the principal interest and fees for six months. So that's another opportunity. And then the last thing is we were able to get $275 million in grants to SBA's development and minority business centers. And these are grants to the nation's network of small business development centers, uh, women business development centers, uh, uh, minority business development centers all around the country, uh, uh, including in our area, that should be very helpful. So I'm, I'm going to uh, cut it there because I don't want this call to go too far over. And I know there's other people with expertise that want to talk. I just want you all to know that my office is a resource. Uh, my, my team is on a full court press and troubleshooting for everybody. Uh, you should feel free to call my office if you need questions about anything, whether it's personal, family, health issues, all the way to small business issues. Uh, there's a lot of people ready uh, and able to help you should you need that help. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Senator Booker. Um, you are tremendously accessible and have just been really uh, uh, exemplifying leadership throughout this whole process. So thank you to you and your office. Um, at this time, I think you've kind of teed it up very well for Altitone from the New Jersey State, um, excuse me, the State Director for the um, a Small Business uh, uh, Authority to um, walk through some of the federal programs. Al? Okay, thanks. Um, a lot of what I'm going to go through is a little bit of background. First, I want to thank the mayor for and Invest Newark for inviting me on. This is excellent and actually the folks on here are getting probably the first look at legislation that hasn't even been signed by the president yet so i think that's fantastic i just want everybody to know that when this hit the the teamwork from the two senators offices from the congressman's office has been absolutely incredible as well as with the state we the state did a tremendous job of getting uh, new jersey qualified for the eidl loans uh, which I will probably refer to idle, so don't let that confuse you. I will probably slip back and forth. I'll try not to. Um, it was just incredible the amount of work that got done in a short amount of time. This is the type of loan that we normally don't see in New Jersey, the one that's not associated with a physical disaster. Um, a few things I want to touch on. Uh, there have been, we've gotten a lot, a lot, a lot of comments about the actual SBA website for the disaster, which is the disasterloan.sba.gov forward slash ELA. Uh, as of this morning, I'm informed it's up. It's in great shape. They've actually increased the um, things that it can do. So once you apply, you can actually go online, you can track your information, you can track your loan. Uh, we are about to embark on a entirely different system than what we are and have historically been with the disaster loan program. Um, I can't go into a lot of it is uh, actually the luckily our Senator Menendez, Senator Booker and Congressman Payne have been here to be able to do a lot of it because until it becomes legislation, until this president actually signs, I can't talk a great deal about it. But what I can tell you is it's going to be an incredible change. If you are in the disaster area right now and you're putting an application in, do not stop, continue. What I can tell you is that will roll over into the new program. Uh, the SBA will be doing any number of grants and there's all sorts of assistance. I'm not gonna steal the state's thunder, but they just passed a whole bunch of programs to help uh, our small businesses. And one of those is to augment what we already do with our resource partners, our small business development centers, our score offices, as well as our women's business centers. Um, so as we go forward with this, and if you want more assistance with the SBA loans, I will, um, I, would, I want you to know that you can go to sba.gov forward slash NJ. You'll look at that, you'll see if there will be a rolling picture on the left, you'll see information about the district. And under that information is a New Jersey resource guide. Click on that and you'll be able to find all of our SBDC centers, our SCORE centers, as well as our women's business centers. Uh, one of the big things that we are seeing 
is that um, we are seeing a lot of folks out there scamming our disaster loan applicants. So let me be really clear. There is no deadline right now for disaster loan application. If somebody's trying to get you in to get in before the deadline, they're a scammer. There is no deadline. You do not need a credit card to apply. There is no court cost, I'm sorry, to apply. If you get anyone talking about this, tell them out to tone from SBA said, that's a lot of junk. I would use stronger words, but we don't want to do that. Um, please help us stop the rumors. Another couple of sites that you're going to find really useful as we're going ahead, FEMA.gov. There's a whole bunch of rumors about the disease, about what you can do. That will help you figure out what is true and what is not. They've got a whole myth buster um, link on it. And these links are going to come up later, I believe. And if not, we'll have them on our site later on. Uh, US, USA.gov forward slash coronavirus is another um, site that you'll need, as well as the disasterloan.sba.gov forward slash ELA. I don't want to take a lot of time because I want the state to be able to go through some of the great programs they've had, but I, I can't tell you how stunned I am and how appreciative I am of Senator Menendez's office, Senator Booker's office, Congressman Payne's office, and actually the entire New Jersey congressional delegation. We've been in contact with almost every single Congress, congressional office across the state, and everybody is on board and trying to help as much as we can. As we go into this new phase of the lending, and grant program, which is going to be brand new to SBA. A lot of you have spoken with before that SBA doesn't do grants. Well, that's about to change. And as soon as I know more about it, I'm going to let everybody else know more about it. But what I do know is, as uh, Senator Menendez said, as we're going through the lenders, both our SBA lenders and apparently our non-SBA lenders will be involved. I'll know more about it as we get ahead. And as soon as I know stuff, trust me, I'm going to put it out as much as I can. So at that, I'm going to leave it. thank you all. And um, I'll be here to answer whatever questions I can. Al, thank you so much. And um, this is Bob Menendez, just for a moment. The House just passed the bill, so it's on its way to the president. Awesome. Thank you so much. Like, thank you. News, thank you. Um, uh, so at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Joe Kelly, who's the Deputy Chief of Staff for Economic Growth in Governor Murphy's office. Joe? Thank you, Aisha. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Okay, great. Thanks, Aisha. Uh, and thank you, Mayor, for your leadership and, and for organizing this call. Uh, thank you to both senators uh, and congressmen and to Al for, uh, for your remarks. Um, I'm going to turn it over to, to Tim Sullivan in a second, who heads the EDA, uh, the Economic Development Authority of New Jersey, because he, he actually has the, the bankroll and the ability to talk about uh, grants and loans, which I'm sure folks are, are very interested in. Uh, but I just wanted to take a minute um, to discuss kind of the new world that we're operating in, um, the various executive orders, and then the state resources that are out there uh, for you all to use. Um, you know, obviously, we're trying uh, to flatten the curve here, and, and the governor is not only promoting social distancing, but asking folks, uh, business owners, uh, to really try and have as many people as possible telecommute. Um, it's, it's absolutely critical for our, you know, not only for the health of everybody in the state um, and for our healthcare system, but for our businesses. Um, the economic impact uh, that this virus will have on the state will be greater if, if we are not all um, doing our best to telecommute and, and flatten the curve. Um, that being said, you know, there has been confusion about, confusion about what businesses can remain open and, and what can't. Um, and I encourage everybody to, uh, first off, look, you know, look at the text in, in Governor's uh, Executive Order 107. Uh, the, the critical difference here, folks, in, in terms of what businesses can stay open and which ones cannot, it, it, it really comes down to retail versus non-retail businesses. Um, the vast majority of retail businesses should not be open with the exception of those deemed essential. So that comes down to things like grocery stores, uh, pharmacies, hardware stores, um, some of the, your, your larger retailers that, that have both a grocery component but have you know, appliances and other things that you might need for day-to-day -day life. Um, and so you know, folks should really become familiar with, uh, with that list. And, and if they have questions about how your business is being impacted, you can, you know, I think most of those questions should be answered in the text of the governor's EO. 
But I also um, implore everybody to go to covid19.nj.gov. And that's a, that's a portal that the site has created um, to help answer COVID questions broadly, both in terms of public health, but in terms also of business and economic impact. Again, that's covid19.nj.gov. And that's kind of the, the state's clearinghouse for all information about COVID-19. I, I think the most important thing that you'll see there is uh, informa- a live chat feature, um, which will enable folks from the Business Action Center to go back and forth to get with you and answer questions um, that folks have about, you know, business impacts uh, and the, you know, uh, the, the impacts on business that COVID-19 has had. Um, and then there's a wide, wide, wide range of other facilities and, and tools you can use on, uh, on that website. Um, the most important thing uh, outside of the chat feature I wanted to highlight is also the jobs portal. So if you go on to covid19.nj.gov, besides getting clarity about, um, you know, retail and essential businesses versus non-essential businesses, you can also um, use the jobs portal, which is uh, a website we create, created to help link employers uh, with folks who have, who have lost their jobs. Um, and that portal is a way to link up and get, get a job with the Amazons, the Wake Ferns, the ShopRites of the world. There are literally tens of thousands of jobs listed by those various employers on that jobs portal. And again, you can access the portal, the jobs portal through, through covid19.nj.gov, or you can go directly to the jobs portal itself by going to jobscovid 19 Dot nj dot gov. So I think, again, for if you're looking for work, if you're looking to hire people, uh, if you have questions about your business, um, it, it is all right there on those two websites. And, and I ask everybody to take a look and, and spread the word uh, as much as you can. Um, I would also say that, you know, everybody's heard a lot about PPE, you know, personal, personal protective equipment. Um, there, there's a shortage of it throughout the country, if not the world right now. And so for, for you know, our New Jersey manufacturers, um, if you manufacture sunglasses, if you're, you know, garments, what, whatever your line of business is, where you think you can flip a switch and quickly start making masks or goggles or booties or, or whatever the, you know, the medical equipment could be, uh, I'd also ask you to, to go to that website. You can, you can send in an email off of that site that will go directly uh, to kind of mission control for the COVID crisis on the state level. Or you can send an email to liam.ryan, L-I-A-M dot Ryan, R-Y-A-N at nj.gov. And Liam's on my team. Uh, he can work with you to figure out a way to um, reconfigure your manufacturing operations so that you can be part of helping, the, uh, helping to solve this PPE crisis. Um, I think that that touches on most of the things I wanted to bring up. Uh, flip it over to, to Tim Sullivan uh, and you, Aisha, um, and looking forward to any questions any folks might have uh, on the backside. Great. Thank you so much, Joe. Feel free to take it away, Tim. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Mayor and the entire New York team, Aisha and, and Allison and, and uh, Brunel and Shoshana, great to be with you. Of course, great to be and an honor to be on a call with uh, both of our senators and Congressman Payne. And Al, great to hear your run up, uh, roundup as well. And also great to hear the breaking news from Senator Menendez about the House passage. Um, uh, as was mentioned earlier, um, you know, Governor Murphy announced yesterday um, some uh, package of an initial package of um, small business relief that we're trying to undertake. Uh, I'm about to uh, describe some programs that speak in, in terms of millions. Uh, it's uh, great to hear that the words billions and trillions were being used by, by the federal delegation because that's the kind of help we're going to need um, to really um, uh, ease the economic pain that's out there uh, in great numbers and great, uh, unfortunately, very widespread right now. Uh, I think the governor described the package we, we approved yesterday as a kind of a bridge to, to the bigger caliber uh, efforts that the, that the federal government can, can, can bring to the table. So we're deeply grateful for those resources that are coming uh, down the pike. Um, we announced a program that has kind of three main features of it. One is a, a grant for the smallest businesses that are, we think, hardest hit under under 10 employees. That's a grant program of up to uh, $1,000 per employee. It's a $5 million, uh, $5 million pool of capital. The application for that will be live uh, early next week. The second is a zero interest loan uh, up to 10 years uh, of up to $100,000 for businesses under $5 million in revenue. Uh, again, that's, uh, uh, that application will be up, will be up next week. 
And then finally, providing some resources to uh, banks, and particularly community development finance institutions. Many of the businesses on this call may work with um, uh, CDFIs already. We want to make sure that uh, we're empowering and providing capital to those businesses, uh, excuse me, to those, to those banks and, and CDFIs as well, so that they can leverage their networks, leverage their balance sheets, stretch our dollars as fast as we can. So in total, it's a $40 million uh, package of EDA support which we think will leverage, you know, between 75 and $100 million of total uh, immediate uh, or near-term relief for small businesses because we do know that there is real, real pain uh, out there. Um, and it's, uh, uh, as Joe said, the, the only way out of this is to, is to heal the public health crisis and to heal the health system. Uh, but once we do, we want as many small businesses as possible to, to be able to come out the other end of this uh, strong enough to get back, uh, get back in business and get back on our front foot. So that's our, that's our goal across the board. Um, again, stay tuned for more details. The, the portal that Joe mentioned, COVID19.nj.gov, will have all the information as, the, as it rolls out uh, on our programs. And we'll make sure that Aisha and Allison and, of course, the mayor and the great team in Newark uh, have that information to blast out to, to the Newark, communities, uh, Newark community as soon as it's ready. Uh, just, that's all I got. Just a quick question that's come through on the chat that um, just because you have two minutes and we're doing well on time, I figured I'd give you opportunity to talk about the difference between um, their, their questions between uh, around eligibility for nonprofits and uh, small businesses eligibility criteria. Yeah, that's if that's uh, related to EDA programs, nonprofits are eligible. Generally speaking, there's a, most forms of nonprofits will be eligible. Those are those are important employers uh, in lots of different uh, communities and, and in Newark is no exception. Uh, so yeah, nonprofits are, are eligible for both the grant and the loan program. Uh, it's going to be based on um, employee size or again revenue size. Um, and if you have any specific questions, um, there's a question portal on that very same website. If you know about your particular circumstances as a as a nonprofit, uh, you can send that through the the portal that Joe mentioned earlier, COVID19.nj.gov. Great. Thanks again uh, to you both. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Bernal Hall, who's the CEO of Invest Newark, to talk a little bit more about the specifics uh, for the City Small Business Fund. Thank you, Aisha. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Burnell Hall, President and CEO of Invest Newark. Uh, speaking on behalf of my partner, uh, Newark Deputy Mayor Allison Ladd. I just want to give everyone a quick overview of the City of Newark's plan to address the impact of COVID-19 on Newark-based small businesses. Um, first and foremost, I, I definitely want to thank Mayor Baraka and all of our public and private partners for their solution-oriented leadership in this time of uncertainty. Um, so uh, in terms of the plan, the City of Newark, in partnership with the United Way of Greater Newark and Invest Newark, uh, is creating a small business emergency fund. And the purpose of the fund is to quickly mobilize resources to ensure that Newark-based small businesses get the help they need as efficiently as possible. As part of the Small Business Grant Program, the City of Newark will offer approximately 200 business grants of up to $10,000 per business to provide working capital for operating costs, payroll assistance, uh, agent accounts payable, and other business-related expenses. Uh, qualifying businesses will be Newark-based with 10 employees or less, uh, showing proof of a direct loss of income due to COVID-19. And the uh, online application will be available Monday, March 30th via the United Way of Greater Newark's website. Again, the online application for the Newark Small Business Emergency Fund will be available on Monday, March 30th via the United Way of Greater Newark uh, website. Uh, in conjunction with the launch of the Small Business Emergency Fund, Invest Newark will be launching a business contract portal and business directory to connect Newark small business community to contract opportunities. And lastly, I just want to mention that we will be doing another small business webinar next week to go into more uh, detail with regard to the Newark Small Business Emergency Fund. Thank you all. Great, thanks, Burnell. Um, so before we, so we will have an opportunity now to transition to Q and A. Um, your team is doing a phenomenal job answering some of the immediate questions that are coming up, both in the Q and A and in the chat. Um, we did kind of crowdsource some questions in advance of the town hall, so I'll um, uh, pose those to uh, our colleagues on the phone. 
um, for folks to jump in where, where things are, are relevant. Um, in case we lose anyone, I just want to publicly thank everyone for participating uh, today. As you can see, we really do have one team. There's a lot of collaboration across the city, state, and federal delegation. Um, thank you, Mayor Baracco, for your leadership, and Vest Newark, Deputy Mayor Allison Ladd, really taking the lead and pulling everyone together. Senator Menendez, Senator Booker, Congressman Payne, Al Tatone from SBA, Joe Kelly from the Governor's Office, Tim Sullivan um, at the EDA, and of course, of course Burnell Hall um, at Invest Newark will all still be available um, in some form to answer questions. Um, so we'll transition over. Um, one question that's come in is, um, what can or should businesses be doing right now to prepare when business does resume? So I would like to toss that over to, um, to Al from SBA, if you would like to jump in first. Sure. Uh, obviously, it's going to depend on the type of business, but there's a couple of basic things everyone can be doing. Um, number one, you want to keep in touch whenever possible with your clientele. Make sure they know that you're still around, that you're going to be there, that it's just a matter of time before things get opened. Uh, number two, kind of look at your costs, you know, minimize. Everyone should be talking to their creditors, seeing who a lot of folks out there are going to be able to get deferrals uh, from a no, any number of their creditors. Not everybody's going to be welcoming to that, but for the most part, a lot of creditors get it. A lot of them are in the same situation. Talk to them, see if they can divert for a few weeks to help you out with your uh, payroll or whatever it is. Uh, the other thing you got to keep in mind is that as we're going forward, you're still going to need to market. So let people know that you're still out there. If you can figure a way of doing little things online or depending what type of business you have, that might help. If you're doing any charity work, let folks know because people appreciate that kind of thing. So it's little things like that can kind of help keep your image out there. And if you can talk to your creditors and get some deferrals, it might help keep your head above water until the CARES Act is uh, fully implemented, which looks like it will happen over the weekend. And then uh, there should be access to a lot of money relatively quickly. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, if a business is applying to the SBA, will that affect the city's approval of getting a grant? So Bert, I'll turn it over to Burnell or Allison to answer that question. Um, and then Tim, if you wouldn't mind jumping in because I'm, I'm sure the same question could be applied uh, to the state. Allison, you wanna? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're just great uh, to be here with you today. Um, Allison Ladd, I wanted to answer your question and the answer is um, that you can apply uh, for the city of Newark uh, with United Way, uh, actually um, along with the states. So you're not gonna be excluded. Uh, we really wanted to give you an opportunity to have funds that are available in Newark today. Um, and it's really with the partnership of United Way that we're able to do this and bring it to you. Um, but you will also be able to apply for state and federal funds. Great, Tim, did you want to jump in? Yeah, uh, I think generally speaking, um, eligibility, we're gonna, we're gonna do our best to be flexible and, and, and supportive. Uh, we know businesses are gonna need more resources certainly than uh, the EDA initial wave and you know, most more they can layer and, and stack them. You know, all, all good from our perspective. Great, next question. Are individuals running sole proprietorships eligible for grant funding or loan dollars? So maybe we could just start um, uh, with Al, then go to Tim, and, and then Allison over now. Al, you're still on mute. Oh, there we go. I keep clicking on the wrong thing. I'm sorry, what was, which, what, what was the question? Sole proprietorships, um, particularly because many of the programs are geared towards small business. Oh. Yeah, no, I mean, we consider small sole proprietorships small business. They they are they are um, eligible under the current disaster loans, or certainly be eligible, I would guess, under the new disaster loans. So that 
is not an issue. Uh, it will mainly what you'll have to probably just take a look, make sure you collect, uh, click on sole proprietorship on the application and it should automatically bring you through. So yeah, the, you should absolutely be eligible at least for the disaster loans. Hi, Aisha, if I can, it's Bob Menendez, I can add to that. Under the law that we wrote, and that just passed the house as well. So proprietorships are eligible for both the Paycheck Protection Program, that's the large program, and economic uh, injury disaster loan program. So uh, sole proprietorships are eligible. Great, thank you, Senator. Thanks, Senator. Hey, it's Tim on the, on the EDA side. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that news from Senator Menendez because that's one of the things we were sort of hoping for and counting on for, for that. Um, for that population, which is an important uh, part of the economy. Um, our program, our grant program is uh, one to 10 employees. But, um, so a solo, uh, you know, a one person shop could be eligible if they're a W-2 employee. Um, we know that's not everybody. And in fact, probably not a lot of, of um, uh, sole proprietorships. And so the, the good news from the Senator there is I think very, very good news. Great, thank you. Um, another question that was posed was, Many business owners in New Jersey, uh, there are many business owners in New Jersey that are undocumented. Will they qualify for any of the loans? So uh, I, I guess I'd like to just start again with the same logic of federal, um, state, and then city. Uh, realized also I didn't give the city an opportunity to jump in on the last question, so we can always go back. I honestly don't know. Maybe Senator Menendez or Senator Booker does. Um, I can tell you currently that would not, they would not be eligible, but I don't know under the new legislation if they are or not. Hey, Ayesha, this is Catherine um, over at United Way. So under the um, the money from the city, I do not believe that undocumented business owners would be eligible for that. Yeah, I think on the state side, um, you're going to have to have things like a employee ID number, employer ID number, and, and be in good standing with, um, you know, the, US, the State Department of Labor, those kinds of things. So that's probably automatically going to uh, create some issues there. Yeah, it's, it's Bob Menendez, unfortunately, although we tried. Uh, the stimulus bill does not specifically prohibit undocumented from receiving assistance. It still keeps in place present SBA regulations which prohibit undocumented small business owners from receiving SBA assistance. So that prohibition that had already existed prior to, unfortunately, the in effect. Thank you, Senator. Uh, next question, are online business owners that do not have a brick and mortar or employees, but due to COVID-19, their online sales have been canceled, and events that would have led to monetary opportunities have been canceled. Would these business owners be eligible for any grants or loans? Uh, Catherine? So, yeah. So this is Catherine again. So for the, the city's funding at this point, what we're doing is targeting, targeting businesses that have a brick and mortar. So we're not targeting home-based businesses or online businesses. We're targeting um, small, small businesses that are either paying rent or own a building um, that have 10 employees or less. You can be a sole proprietor. I see that question keeps popping up as well. But at this point, not for a home-based business or an online business. Aisha, on the federal level, uh, a small business without employees uh, are eligible for one of the programs. It would be the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Uh, so they would be uh, eligible for that. Great, thank you. Yeah, on the state side, I think the rules are, um, uh, the way we've been phrasing it, you have to have a commercial presence in the state. Um, so you've got to have some location outside your home. Uh, for both of our main programs here. Great, so um, next question. What amount is the government willing to help the mom and pop business that makes up the majority of the Newark fabric? Many of them are living month to month. 
Um, and so uh, I'll just expand on this a, a, a little bit. From the state's perspective, Tim, maybe you can talk about the difference between um, the uh, program that's focused on the micro businesses um, and, and just add a little bit more color there. The grant program. Sorry, if that was for me, that was my son uh, declaiming we didn't feed him lunch an hour ago. Um, okay. Yelling at me in the other, on the, in the other ear. Um, yeah, on the grant side, yeah, the, the, the grant is focused on the smallest businesses. Um, we fed him lunch an hour ago, don't worry about that. Um, uh, we, uh, it's focused on the smallest businesses under 10, trying to serve as many of those, uh, you know, whatever, whatever your term of uh, preference is, mom and pops, main street businesses, rural neighborhood businesses. Um, uh, trying to trying to get those dollars where they really need it most. I think lots of the bigger you get, the likelier you are to be able to access bank capital typically. Uh, and so uh, doing our best to stretch those dollars um, into the smallest uh, micro business as possible, one to 10 employees. And I'm sure at the federal level, they will be eligible for at least one, if not two, if not several of the other programs, because they would be eligible right now for the idle, the, the disaster loan. So under the New CARES Act, I'm sure that they would also be eligible for that and more. Great, thank you, Al. Uh, so we'll take one more uh, question and then I'll turn it back over to uh, the mayor to offer some closing remarks. There was a, a question that came up in the chat related to any flexibility um, around credit scores, um, understanding that many smaller businesses and sole proprietors have, um, may have some challenges. So uh, if either on the city side or the state side, um, you can talk a little bit about um, if that was considered in your recent um, eligibility requirements. Aisha, yeah, could you repeat I, that really quick? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Uh, credit, credit scores, uh, credit ratings with um, uh, for small business owners, if there's been any thought around flexibility there. Yeah, uh, on the state side, sorry, was that, that was the senator going to jump in? Great. Um, on the state side, on the loan program that we announced yesterday, uh, typically our, our credit score number is usually between 680 and 700. We dropped that to 600, 600 um, for the purposes of this uh, program. So on the on the United Way city front, they, these are grants, they're not right. loans. So we're not checking any credit scores. However, you cannot have any pending litigation. You have to attest to no pending litigation and that and you must also be current with any tax payments or fees to the city of Newark. Great, thank you. Um, so again, I just want to thank all of our, uh, everyone who carved out time today to participate, all the small business owners and entrepreneurs who joined, all of our honorary speakers, again, including our Mayor Raj J. Baraka, Senator Bob Mendez, Senator Cory Booker, Congressman Donald Payne, Al Moore from the Small Business Administration, Joe Kelly from the Tim Sullivan, CEO of the EDA, Bernal Hall at Invest Newark, um, and Allison Ladd, Deputy Mayor of Economic and Housing Development, and Catherine Wilson from United Way for, um, for joining in. Um, I think it's unprecedented how quickly this came together for the benefit of small business owners. Um, thank you to uh, Shoshana Page, Senior Policy Advisor under Mayor Baraka, and Vanessa Quijano, uh, SVP of Business Development at Invest Newark, for really working to pull at this time, I'd like to turn it back over to our Mayor, Raz Baraka. Again, I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Aisha, for hosting it. Thank every, uh, all of the partners from the federal, state, uh, and our community partners, private sector as well, for being a part of this call. Again, this is not our last call. It's the first one. We're going to do more one, specifically next week, just talking about the Newark's uh, program. Newest program is new. I've been, I've seen questions on there talking about what Aisha said. Uh, we, we're not loaning money. Our, our, our fund is a grant uh, fund. Uh, 
you, the eligibility is just for, you know, requirements will be listed right on the website. You can apply right there. We'll go right into those things. We, we hope that you took down the information that the state gave you, all of the websites and everything that they've given you, uh, as well as the federal government. I think Senator Booker gave a, a host of information, so did Senator Menendez and Congressman Payne. Uh, prayerfully, you took all of that information down and you'll interface with them uh, going forward and with their staff about how you can get access to, the, to those resources. There's more, more things that are, that are coming up that we're working on on the city side and we're gonna be in conjunction with the state and federal government as well. Uh, stay tuned to our uh, calls in the future. Uh, we'll put that information up and out shortly. So uh, you need to connect on that as well. And this video, this, uh, excuse me, this webinar will be made, uh, uh, is recorded. So we put it up as well so you can follow up and listen to it again when it is over. And uh, folks that could not be on the call that you know of have an opportunity to access this information uh, as well. So once again, thank you for being on the call with us today. Uh, we're gonna try to do this again next week. Thank you. I see a lot of questions about FAQs. Um, this presentation has been recorded and will be made available and distributed to both everyone that was on the call and publicly. And we will also also be circulating frequently asked questions. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday and be well.